how to make a satisfying piece of music. And by satisfying, I don't mean a piece of music that you are satisfied by because you think it's brilliant, although that can come into it. What I more mean is for the listener, a piece of music that is satisfying, that kind of lands where something happens and someone feels that they've arrived somewhere. In drafting a piece of music, what some people call making an arrangement, we have the various different tools at our disposal, various different things that we do. One is the structure of that music. So what structure means is what sections there are and what order they're in. So for example, A, B, A, C, B, or otherwise known as verse, chorus, verse, bridge, chorus is an example of a structure. Also, we have tension. So tension is what drives music. It's all about creating an expectation and then violating that expectation and then delivering on that expectation. Because when you don't do something that someone expects, you create tension. Tension is how music works. It's how it moves forward. Something to remember is that energy, which is something that a lot of musicians will obsess about almost or think about a lot, is actually a result of a release of tension. So I tend not to worry about energy too much and instead focus on creating tension and releasing it because that's what creates the energy, very similar to an elastic band. On top of that, we have arc. And it's a word that I've taken from storytelling to describe something I think is important, which is kind of a combination of structure and tension because arc is the shape of the tension through the sections because we can have tension within sections or even within parts, but we can also have tension growing over successive sections. And how we do that, how we create a shape of tension through the piece is in the arrangement of the parts within sections. So you can have a verse, chorus, verse, bridge, chorus structure, and you could have it so that the tension was rising all the way through and then was released at the very end in the final chorus. Okay, so arc kind of is over and within the sections. And it's about the shape of the tension and release. And then on top of that, we have contrast, which is one of the main methods that we use to delineate the sections and also create tension. Because if you say, you know, tension is about creating an expectation and then violating that expectation, when you have a contrasting section, you're actually violating an expectation. So if you start something really quiet and then it goes very loud, you're violating an expectation. Then when it goes back down to quiet again, again, you violated the previous expectation. So contrast creates a lot of tension and it's also a great way of letting the listener know where they are. But then on top of that, is what I'm calling the key payoff. What is the key payoff? So let's talk about, and by the way, if you haven't watched Star Wars, then turn away and close your ears because I'm about to spoil it for you. But I'm guessing that if you haven't watched Star Wars yet, you're probably not going to. <laughs> so, so I'm not sure that's a required spoiler warning, but I thought I ought to uh, give it to you. So let's talk about Star Wars. Starts off with Luke Skywalker being bored on Tatooine. The Empire kills his family and he gets taken and he starts training as a Jedi with Ben. And then at the end, he destroys the Death Star. And that, where he destroys this Death Star, is the key payoff. So what's this got to do with music? If you think about it, obviously Luke destroying the Death Star is, in a sense, the punchline of Star Wars. It's where, if you like, the purpose is achieved, because at the end he basically decides to turn off 
his targeting computer. Again, spoilers, spoilers. He turns off his targeting computer and I was like, Luke, what are you doing? He goes, you turned off your targeting computer. And he says, no, I'm, I'm using the force because, you know, old Ben just says, use the force. Yeah. So he's actually finally listening to, he's becoming the Jedi he was always meant to be. So the purpose is achieved. It's almost like it's the defining moment of the piece where he destroys that Death Star. And often, certainly in the case of Star Wars, it's the biggest release of tension. You can see how, in terms of Star Wars, and in fact, in terms of most movies, what this key payoff moment is. And the same is true of a lot, not all, there's always an exception, but a lot of music. So in pop music and a lot of songwriting, the key payoff is the final chorus. Again, a lot, but not all. In club music, it's the drop after the main break, when the rhythm and the bass line comes back in. In classical music, in sonata form, the final section, which is called the recapitulation. Here you can see that the structure and the tension and release of music is actually very similar to the structure and the tension and release of storytelling as well. And it is a bit of a cliche to, you know, say you're taking them on a journey, telling a story through your music, but it's kind of what's happening. In fact, I would go as far as to say that there is a near universal arc that we can think about using. And I'm not necessarily saying you must always use this. And if you don't use it, it's wrong. But if you understand this basic structure, You've probably understood the majority of music, <laughs> maybe 80% of music. And then you can, once you've kind of mastered that structure and you've played around with it, or at least if you know that structure, it's something that you can violate, right? Because this isn't a rule. It's just something that is all over the place, okay? And understanding this means that you can play with it and again, violate the expectation. So for example, if you decide you want to do something different, well, then you'll be creating tension because you'll be going against what people expect. It's like a kind of embedded cultural norm that we've got. So the first step is the situation. So Luke on Tatooine, where he's bored. Yeah. In songwriting and pop, often that shows up in the verse and chorus one. In dance music, it's in the groove. And in sonata form, in classical music, it's the exposition. Section two, or maybe act two, because act two is made up of different sections. Luke trains as a Jedi. Well, in pop music, it's often, not always, but often the verse and chorus two and the bridge. In dance music, it's often the breakdown. In classical music, it's the development. And then... The final section, and usually the payoff happens at the start of this section, is where Dr Luke destroys the Death Star. In pop music, we've got the final chorus. In dance music, we've got the drop. And as I said, in classical sonata form, we have the recapitulation. So understanding this basic structure is very useful because it gives you a model that you can sort of work as a placeholder and then when you choose to violate. So I don't want you to think about this as a, I must do this. And if I do this, it's right. And if I don't do it, it's wrong. It's not that. It's just that if you use this on occasion, you're going to be going along with what people expect. And what that means is that when you go with what people expect, you're not creating as much tension. I mean, there's tension within this structure, within itself, but it's almost like you can, by violating this structure, you can actually create more tension. So for example, in some of my pieces, I choose not to go to a final payoff because I want, in the context of an album, for it to kind of stay in this place. So it's not necessarily that you need to always do this, but understanding this and seeing it and hearing it in music, listen to the music that you love and hear it in there because it's 
very often now, I would say probably the majority of the time, some kind of structure like this exists. Why? It's because it works. It's because it, it mirrors our experience. We're in a situation, we have a problem, and then we find a solution, which then creates another problem. It's another situation, creates another problem. We struggle to find a solution, and then we find a solution, which puts in another situation where we, and so it goes on. So in some way, this structure is our experience. And if you can mirror people's experience, if you can connect with other people through this universal experience, then your music is going to work. Then your music is going to be magnetic. Then people are going to feel satisfied when they listen to your music.